up in the best way Hi, I'm Dave with Fastway Trailer Products. Today we're here at the factory in Provo, Utah. We're going to go through the install of a Fastway E2 round bar hitch. Now the reason that you'd want to use an E2 hitch over either a ball mount or uh, old chain style weight distribution hitch is twofold. The first is the ball mount doesn't give you any weight distribution or sway control at all. The second reason is an old chain style hitch will give you some weight distribution, but the new E2 hitch gives you a lot better weight distribution and it gives you built-in sway control. With an old chain style hitch, you'd have to use some sort of an add-on to get any sway control with it. With the E2 hitch, all of that's built right into the hitch. When you couple up, hook up your trailer, the weight distribution is engaged and the sway control is engaged and you just go down the road. It's a lot simpler, a lot easier, a lot less hassle. So especially when you're uh, getting things ready to go, getting ready to tow, or you're putting them up and cleaning them up to put them away. And also there's no backing restrictions or turning restrictions on it. So if you get into a, a tight camp spot, backing your trailer in, you don't have to get out and undo everything. It's just fine, you just back right in and you're ready to go. So with that, let's get started by showing you what's in the package. All right, as we open up the package, we get our owner's manual. Make sure that you read through this thoroughly before you start the setup and then follow along with it carefully as you do the setup. That'll make sure that you get a really good setup to keep you and your family safe. Keep the owner's manual with you in case you ever get a different trailer or a different tow vehicle. Don't just keep using the same setup. Make sure that you go back through the install instructions and get that hitch set up correctly. That'll make sure that you and your family are as safe as you can be when you're towing. So put that in your trailer and keep hold of that. This is your round bar hitch head. You also have an adjustable shank in here. Now this one can be either used in the drop position like this or the rise position like this. We also have specialty shanks that are longer that give you more drop or more rise. Make sure that you go through the process and get the correct shank. If this one doesn't work for your particular setup needs, get a specialty shank, use the right one and get your hitch head at the right height. That'll make setting up your weight distribution that much easier and it will be a lot safer and more convenient setup as well. And of course you've got your hardware packs in here. Now these are your round bar spring arms, there's two of those. The unique thing about these is the surface here on the bottom, that's the piece that rides on the L bracket and that's where you get your built-in friction sway control. Down here we have the rest of the brackets that fit on your trailer frame. This is an inside link plate and an outside link plate and you've got a pair of those. You bolt around the trailer frame. Now this is the L bracket and it bolts here on the outside link plate. This gives you your adjustability up and down to quickly and easily change your weight distribution as well as this friction point where you get your sway control. That's about it, so let's take a look at the tools you're going to need. For your round bar install, make sure that you're following your instruction manual and you're going to need some wrenches. The first is uh, either a box end or a combination wrench or a socket wrench, an inch and one eighth and an inch and a sixteenth. Those will be used to tighten down the shank bolts that hold the hitch head to the adjustable shank. You're also going to need a torque wrench for that that's capable of up to 250 foot-pounds to make sure that you get those torque down nice and tight. Now you don't want, really want to use an air hammer. Uh, you could use that initially to, to, to tighten them down, but then you want to check it with your, with your torque wrench to make sure that you're right at that 250 foot-pound mark because if you're underneath that, it's going to be loose and you don't want to tow with a loose hitch head. And if you're over that, you can actually stretch or damage the hardware. So you don't want to be under or over, you want to be right on. Make sure that you use your torque wrench. You're also going to need a 15 16 inch wrench, either that or a socket. That's for your angle set bolt to tighten down and get the angle on the hitch head. You're going to need a set of three quarter inch wrenches to do the link plates and the L brackets. That's the hardware that's back on the trailer frame. If you're going to install your hitch ball yourself, you're going to need even a bigger torque wrench. Most of the hitch ball manufacturers are looking for uh, about 450 to 460 foot-pounds of torque because 
because the nut and the threads on that are so big. And so you'll need a great big torque wrench for that. And for the round bar, you need this specialty socket that we make. This is an inch and three quarter socket, but it's much shorter than a standard inch and three quarter socket would be. And it has a little bit different taper here. The idea behind that is this is, will fit up into the round bar hitch head where some of the other sockets won't. So you need to get that from Fastway Trailer Products or from your uh, E2 hitch dealer. Okay, a couple more notes before we start the actual setup of the hitch. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that your trailer and your tow vehicle are loaded pretty much the way that you would normally tow with them. That means water in the water tanks, propane in the propane tanks, camping gear. If you're gonna be towing some firewood or a four-wheeler in your truck, make sure that that's in place. Get those weights all set up the way that they will be when you're towing and that way the setup on your hitch is correct. You're getting good weight distribution and sway control for those particular weights. That gives you the safest towing setup that you can get. Another thing that you need to be aware of is the airbag systems on your tow vehicle. If you have a manual system that you blow up on your rear axle, make sure that you inflate those airbags to whatever you like them to be before you set the weight distribution up on your hitch. If you wait, set the weight distribution hitch up first and then blow up the airbags, you effectively raise the sway control and the weight distribution off the hitch and that nullifies the effect. So you don't wanna do that. Set the airbags to the pressure that you want first, then set up your E2 hitch. Now next is the automatic leveling systems that come on some of the vehicles. You want those to be shut down when you turn, when you engage your hitch and get the setup for the weight distribution. So either turn the key off and make sure that that doesn't run or pull out the fuse so that doesn't run in some cases then set your weight distribution hitch up and that way it will come out as a much better setup. All right, let's put the hitch ball on the hitch head. Now to start the install, you want to set your trailer and your tow vehicle on a nice level piece of ground, uh, flat and level, either like a parking lot or inside a, a workshop or something like that. Line them up together so that they're in line with each other. And then the next thing that you need to do is to level your trailer that way that you can get the correct coupler height and you need that to set the rest of your hitch up correctly so the way that i like to do that is to measure the main frame rail of the trailer both at the front and the back when the measurement on to that is equal you know you've got your trailer parallel to the ground and then you can move on and go ahead with the rest of the install so i just come down here like this and check from the ground to the bottom of the frame rail here this is showing 17 inches. Now I'll go check the back. To put the hitch ball on, you slide the shank into the receiver and then put your hitch pin in temporarily just to hold it. Then you wanna take your hitch head, you mount it upside down, and you temporarily hold that with your shank bolts. Just like that. Now the hitch ball slides up from underneath it and you put your split washer on make sure that's in between the nut and the hitch head and then you tighten this down from there now at this point you're going to need your helper um, this you need to hold the flats of the hitch ball and hold that steady and we've got our giant torque wrench set to our 460 foot-pounds. Now this needs to slide in there. We've got to get that over just like that and drops into place. And then we'll go ahead and torque that down tight. With our hitch ball installed, it's time to get the hitch head set at the right height on our adjustable shank. We have our trailer level. So the first step we need to make is to check this coupler height right here. We measure to the top of the coupler, that's where the hitch ball locks up in place there. And this is about 22 and a half inches. So that's the height that we need to set our hitch head. Now, the first thing we need to do is put some spacer washers and our spacer rivet in the head. This is a fairly light setup, so I'm gonna go with an initial of four washers. And with some experience, you'll learn kind of where you need to start. Um, that can go four, five, or six 
but we're going to go with a little lighter setup and so I'm going to start with four to see if we can get that close. Now we need to get our 22 and a half inches and I think that's going to be in the top hole here. You want to put these bolts in so that the washers have the teeth facing the bolt channel. Just like that. And now we're going to check And that gets us pretty close to that 22 and a half. So we're going to start there. Now, place the other set of washers on the other side and make sure the teeth again face the bolt channel. Just hand tighten the nuts. We're going to do a final tightening at the end where we tighten everything up to the right torque specs. This just keeps it safer while we're getting our weight distribution adjusted. And the last thing we need to do here is tighten down this angle set bolt. That's our 15 16 socket. And we just bring that up until our spacer washer and spacer rivets come in contact with that shank. We don't need to go too tight right now. We're going to final tighten that later as well. And now we're ready to go ahead and put the brackets back on the trailer. The next step is to install the inside and outside link plate and the L brackets back here on the trailer frame. For the round bar, those need to be between 27 inches and 24 inches. Now that's one of the nice features about the E2 hitch is you have some flexibility on those bracket installs. So if you need to miss something like the battery rails or the propane tanks, you can move those up or down a little bit, forward or back, and have room to get those on without making any modifications to the trailer tongue itself. So we measure from the center of the coupler here and come back along our line. 27 puts us just about right there on the R. That's the optimal distance, so that's where we're going to put them. We take the outside link plate like this, run the bolts from the front to the back, and then you put the inside link plate here. On the back side, you put the split washer and then the nut. Now those plates just drop over the top just like this. In this instance, we have a top mount coupler, so we're mounting this with the studs at the top of the frame. Otherwise, if it were a bottom mount coupler, we would do it the opposite way. We would start with these, bring them up tight to the bottom of the frame this way, and then put the second bolt in here through the top. That makes it so that your studs kind of match the height of the coupler, and that makes it easier to adjust your L bracket and get your weight distribution set up correctly. But in our case, we don't need to do that. We're going to stick with that here. Now, another thing to note, these are the stock brackets that come with the hitch. They're set up to fit a three, four, five, or six inch trailer frame. This one has a four inch frame. So our bolt is going to go right here through this hole. You want to make sure that you get that up as tight as you can to the frame. Don't leave it so that there's any space underneath here or at the top. You want those to be right tight and pinch them in good and snug. There is one manufacturer, Bal Norco, that makes a frame that fits on a lot of the trailers and that one is four and three eighths inches. We make a specialty set of brackets for those so get in touch with your dealership or give us a call here at Fastway Trailer Products. If you have that size of frame we'll get you the right bracket so that you get a nice tight fit. Now the next step is just to put the nuts back on the back side of the bottom bolt. And then you want to tighten them down evenly. Just finger tighten them at first, but you want them to be pinched together tight to the frame so that they're both flush to the frame and they don't get installed crooked one way or the other. Once you have that done, you take your three quarter inch, tighten those bolts down. You want to go fully tight and then a good hard turn. The torque settings on these, final torque setting is 65 foot-pounds. Once those are done, take your L bracket. I like to start with them here in the center two holes. So put the lock nuts on the outside of those. These are a nylock nut. The others have a split washer. And then these get tightened down to 75 foot-pounds. We'll go ahead and do that and then we'll take our measurements. Now another thing we need to do is set our spring arms into the hitch head. You can see on our round bar 
the curve here we've got a notch. Now that notch sits up inside and there's a pin right here that locks that into place to keep it from falling out until you get it all connected up. This pin has a taper so all you need to do is get this lined up correctly, slide it up in there, make sure that it locks and that pin engages it and then it's ready to go. Our next step will be to back up and we'll start taking our weight distribution setup measurements. Well, we've got everything set up, our hitch ball at the correct height, the brackets on our trailer. We've backed the tow vehicle up so that it's directly underneath the coupler, but we don't have it coupled up. There's no weight on the tow vehicle yet. Now it's time to take our first measurement. This is our uncoupled, no weight distribution height. This is our baseline. So we're gonna check that here. We're at 37 and 3 quarters. Now we need to drop the weight on and we'll take a second measurement. We've dropped the weight of the tongue onto our hitch ball here. So we've, we're off the ground. There's no more tongue weight resting on the jack. It's all on the truck, but we don't have our weight distribution bars engaged. Now we need to take our second measurement. Now this should show that the front of the truck has come up a little ways because what we're effectively doing is taking some of the weight off the front axle. It acts kind of like a teeter-totter over the rear axle. So we should expect this to be a higher measurement. And we have 38 inches. So we've lost a little bit of braking control, a little bit of steering control. And that's what we're aiming to get back with our E2 weight distribution hitch. So we'll go put the weight distribution on and take our third measurement. Now, we've got it coupled up. We use the tongue jack to raise the trailer and the tow vehicle up together, and then swing our spring arms on. That's the easiest way to couple up your hitch. You can use that snap-up lever if you need a little extra lift at the end of that. So use your tongue jack, save yourself some work. So we're gonna pull this up. We've got all of our weight on the weight distribution arms. And it looks to me like this is a little bit over distributed. We're gonna check it and see what we get. So our goal is to get at least halfway back to the 37 and three quarters. And we've gone beyond that quite a ways. Now we're down to 37 and a quarter. So we do have too much weight distribution. We've used the least amount of spacer washers that we can use, so we need to make some adjustments to the L-brackets, and then we'll try it again. We made the adjustments to our L-brackets. We lowered them down two holes all the way to the end there, and that's reducing our weight distribution. Now, this is kind of an extreme example. This is a trailer that we're uh, using. We borrowed from Miller Trailer Sales in Spanish Fork. It doesn't have full propane tanks or water or any cargo in it. So ours is a bit of a unique situation. Yours will be different when you have yours loaded. You probably won't have to make this type of an adjustment. But the point I wanted to make is to check it and adjust it if you need to. Make sure that you're as safe as you can be on the road. Now let's check our third measurement again. And that's much better. We're back down to the 37 and 3 quarter mark. So our goal was to get at least halfway back, which would have been 37 and 7 eighths. We've gone all the way back, 37 and 3 quarters. We're not over distributed. So this is about as good a setup as you can get for this uh, combination. Our next step now is to check the pitch, the attitude of the trailer, and make sure that we're still riding level there. We'll do that now. To check the pitch, we're gonna come back, do the same thing that we did to level the trailer initially. We're just gonna check our trailer frame. When we had it level, we were at 17 on the front and the back. We're just a little bit below that, 16 and three quarters. That's well within the inch and a quarter tolerance that we need up or down. So our pitch on our trailer is good. It's gonna tow nice and level. Our weight distribution is good. Our setup's good. Now we need to go and do the final tightening and then take it out for a tow. Now we've got the weight distribution and our pitch good. We're gonna do the final tightening. I've pulled the truck forward and we've taken the weight distribution off. The spring arms are out of the hitch. So we undo the hitch pin and we're gonna take this out. And we're gonna turn it over 180 degrees like that. And put our pin back in. Now that gives us access to this and it also 
takes the weight. You can see there's just a little bit of movement when you put the weight distribution on initially. Sometimes those spacer washers and rivet compress just a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take that movement out. We're not gonna do it really snug. Our next steps will be to take our, uh, our socket with our um, torque wrench and our open end wrenches. We torque down the shank bolts here as tight as they need to be, 250 foot-pounds of torque, and use the torque wrench to double check that. Once that's all tight, the hitch head is good to go. Flip it back over and give this another quarter of a turn. Then, back on our brackets back here on the trailer, we want to just double check that the link plates are torqued to 65 foot-pounds and the L brackets are torqued to 75 foot-pounds. Once that's done, We'll couple back up and we'll be ready to go and take it out for a test drive. Well, we've final tightened everything up. We are coupled back up, engaged our weight distribution. We've got our seven way plug in there and our breakaway cable. Our safety chains are on. We're ready to take it out for a tow. Thanks for taking the time to watch our install video. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can see the other videos that we do and get notifications of the new ones that come out. If you like them, give us a thumbs up and also take the time to like our social media pages. We have frequent product updates there, conversation back and forth if you have questions, and we have some great giveaways. So until next time, thanks for watching. once you get it all set up. Now, uh, one more note that I need to make before we start setting up the hitch. <laughs> Mind bl Well, I guess it just means I'm not too proud. <laughs> We're gonna go through an install of a, tr of, shoot, just let it roll, just let it roll. Ah, why she told me not to say that. <laughs> well, that's about it.